So that is religion as binding. The next method of manipulation, the next big gun of manipulation that I'm going to talk about is the subversive use of symbolism, the mentally subversive use of symbolism, particularly in Western culture and particularly through advertising. So, symbolism is everywhere. It is omnipresent. It is all around us. It is in just about everything we see in uh, our daily uh, dealings in, in the physical world. It's stamped on just about everything. And it's a language. Symbolism is a language. A symbol is neither positive nor negative, just like knowledge, just like occultic knowledge. A symbol is simply something that has the ability to influence consciousness. Because symbols are a language that we read through the subconscious mind largely. And we often can get a message through symbol, symbol immediately through symbolic language. We get the message immediately, even if we do not really understand the symbol at a conscious level. Because it is not really speaking to the conscious mind unless you know the language of symbolism. And unfortunately, many people do not. They're, uh, they are illiterate when it comes to reading symbolic language, and therefore they're really at its mercy. They're really at the mercy of how a, uh, an advertiser or a product peddler wants to reach your subconscious mind if you're not aware of how they're using symbols to, to reach the, uh, the subconscious regions of, of the mind and the subconscious awareness. So we have to become symbol literate if we're going to uh, be able to use symbols ourselves, if we're going to be able to protect ourselves against unwanted influence and usage of symbols. Uh, what I'm going to do is present a symbol, describe how it is being used, for what purpose, and then I'm going to um, give examples of how the symbol is used in, in logos. So the first symbol is that of the sun which we already talked about the significance. The sun is a symbol of light, of life, of knowledge and information. It's a symbol of moral uprightness, okay, of morality. Um, uh, most of all, it is a symbol of, um, of, uh, <coughs> of knowledge, of awareness, of enlightenment of having knowledge and being able to use it uh, to, to uh, uh, do the correct things that will lead to awareness and will lead to order in life, will lead to prosperity in life. That's what the sun has traditionally been a symbol of, however, wherever it has been used in iconography. And we see this employed by um, companies that want you to trust them, want you to uh, identify with their products as something that is used for life, that is used for life blood, so to speak, that, um, that is used to represent enlightenment even. So here we see it used in oil logos, in uh, gasoline companies. So um, uh, you see it here, Sun Oil Company. Gulf uh, with a large orange disc representing the sun behind it, the sunflower of uh, British Petroleum, and uh, uh, Dutch Royal Shell gasoline, um, which is uh, a symbol of the, the sun coming up over the horizon with the rays, even though it's encased in the outer shell, it still is clearly uh, an image of a, a rising sun with the rays of light coming up over the horizon. We see it in uh, technology, we see it in media, we see it in food companies. One of my favorites is ShopRite. You see the, the shopping cart with the sun behind it, indicating that if you shop there, you can purchase light. It's a, a, a subconscious play on the symbol. So uh, they're trying to sell enlightenment as part of the product. You know, something that you lack, something that they are aware that you want spiritually is being sold to you by proxy. And a, a rite is a ritual, the ritual of shopping. Shop rite, and there is the sun in the, in the basket. It's a very good example. In financial institutions, the sun is ever-present because, again, it is a symbol of trust. 
It is a symbol of sovereignty. It is a symbol of knowledge and enlightenment. On the Discover Charge Card, Sun Trust Mortgage Corporation, Here's Citibank, the cross of the zodiac and the sun coming up over the horizon. Lucius Trust, Lucius meaning light. Sovereign Bank, uh, sovereignty being sold to you through your banking institution. This circle uh, uh, with the, uh, the, the, the dot with the circle around it, an ancient symbol of the sun and, uh, in, uh, in the, uh, uh, the, the shopping uh, giant Target. Uh, of course, Barack Obama's logo, the rising sun. Many people just look at this as an O with the American stripes, but it is the sun coming up over the horizon because he is being sold to us as the new savior that will save us from all the evils of the former administration. He is the new uh, reincarnated sun savior. So the, uh, the zodiac is the next uh, symbol that is used, and uh, this is these symbols have to do with zodiacal houses and astrotheology in general. We see it on secret society logos such as the uh, Order of the Molay, the cross of the zodiac. You have you have the uh, the cross of the um, uh, the the uh, solar system, the equinoxes and the and, and the solstices, and then you have the galactic cross, the great cross there, the double uh, cross. Here you have the Knights of Malta's logo, the cross of the zodiac, the equal armed cross. On the CIA, the Central Intelligence, the cross with the sun. Uh, and BMW's logo, a, an equal armed cross, quartered like the zodiac wheel. You have uh, the moon uh, iconography used in um, Starbucks logo. You see the crescent moon, um, and she has the star. She's crowned as queen of the heavens. So again, it's uh, uh, the, the, um, the goddess being used there. Um, the uh, horns of Aries often used in different corporate logos. You see the ring of Saturn used over and over again. Here's more rings of Saturn. Mercury, the planet used there. Specifically Pisces, the two fish, see examples of how this iconography is used. Here we see the, the sacred geometry of the Vesica Pisces, used in MasterCard's logo, the unification of male and female into the womb of creation, the, the one womb. And this symbol being the, uh, the female sex organ, the channel for men, channel for men, the Vesica Pisces, male and female uniting. Again, on Cool's logo, we see it used as the depiction of Jesus, the fish, because the sun is now currently in the house of Pisces, the fish. And of course, the Pope, the vicar of the sun god incarnate upon earth, he wears the, the mitre, which is the fish with its mouth open. And here you see the astrotheological cross, the equal armed cross of the sun on his forehead. Here you see it again on his sash. And he carries the image of the cross with the sun god upon it. The inverted pentagram. So the pentagram is used as a symbol of the four elements and then a fifth element. The four elements being earth, air, water, and fire, the material world. But more specifically, what those elements represent is Earth is our resources. It is what we have to work with, the things that we can put into use for ourselves in the world and how we use them. And it is our makeup, our, our genetic makeup, our natural abilities. That's what Earth represents. Air represents our intellectual makeup, the powers of the mind, the powers of air, our intellect. Water is our emotional makeup, how we use our emotions uh, to, to change consciousness in the world. And then fire is our actions, the male principle, what we do with what we have. So those are the four elements, but then they all must be governed by the fifth element, and the fifth element is ether or spirit. It is the actual pure essence of consciousness, 
uh, the essence of who and what we really are that we must connect to to unite the other elements. So it is love, it is higher consciousness, it is spirit. And uh, in its correct upright form, you have the four elements at the bottom and then the point facing up to represent spirit. The inverted pentagram is the symbol of the opposite of that. It is the material realm, the earth, air, water, and fire, the elements ruling over spirit, the fifth element, which is why an inverted pentagram is a negative connotation of this symbol. It's a reversal of a powerful, positive, connotative symbol, the upright pentagram. The inverted pentagram means that the spirit is being thrust downward and is being ruled by the material realm. And here we see it in the Order of the Eastern Star. Here we see it in the Victoria Police logo. Here we see it in the official emblem of um, the Church of Satan. And here we see an upright pentagram for the Fraternal Order of Police, but I'm going to refute that symbol as actually being upright, and I'm going to tell you that its real orientation, if you study the iconography inside of that circle there, you, you would not orient that temple as it is in all Masonic tradition, unless you flip that pentagram over, and then you're seeing it for what it really is being used for, particularly in the, its usage with the Fraternal Order of Police. The blood drop is another symbol that is used, not as widespread as some of the others, but as certainly in as powerful of a way. And this, again, represents life force energy, the blood drop. It is our life blood. So we see this in often oil companies and financial institutions. Commerce Bank, Luke Oil, oil, money, these are your life blood. Pemex oil from Mexico, Getty, here's the combination of the blood drop with the solar disk. The triangle and all-seeing eye, or pyramid and all-seeing eye. So this is a symbol of intelligence, this is a symbol of higher consciousness, this is the symbol of awareness. And here's how it is being used. AOL's logo, the, the CBS eye, there's a, there's a uh, uh, symbolic uh, speech synthesis in there, CBS. That's what you will be seeing if you watch CBS, you will see BS. Fidelity Investments, you see the pyramid with the all-seeing eye at the top, crowned in light. Knowledge at higher levels, darkness below in ignorance those below, the, the highest levels. Arco, here is the symbol of a pyramid with the capstone missing as seen from above. Here we see in Masonic iconography, the all-seeing eye above the compasses and square. Here we see it on the re reverse of the Great Seal of the United States, which is on the back of the dollar bill, which I'll be going uh, which I'll be uh, uh, explaining in detail. The Information Awareness Office, and of course, British Intelligence, MI5's logo. The, uh, the um, pyramid, the cap missing, and the eye in the middle of it. The owl is a powerful symbol of the elite. The owl is I guess you could say the mascot of the sorcerers. It is the animal most identified with consciousness that is aware, yet is using that knowledge to suppress those who are not in the know. And we see it most um, widely used in the Bohemian Club. This is a organization of elite occultists that meet once a year in the uh, Redwood Grove, uh, about 70 miles north of San Francisco, and they have rituals in this grove that are actually derived from ancient Babylonian ceremonies. And 
they have a stone owl there that represents an Ammonite uh, god that was uh, children were often sacrificed and immolated to this god. This god's name was Molech or Moloch, and the uh, it was often depicted as a bull god. The owl kind of um, has been used to uh, uh, as a symbol symbolic representation of this bull because the bull has the two horns like a horned owl does and it can be seen as either a bull or an owl in the in the Babylonian tradition it was more frequently represented as a bull but it was also seen as an owl because it represents the immolation of a specific aspect of consciousness and that is the feminine aspect of consciousness so what, what the ritual entails, if you really understand its, its deep symbolic significance, which many do not, and they will say, oh, it's just a harmless ritual by men who are acting out psychodrama. It's, it's nothing of the kind. It's, a, it's, it's an extremely subversive ritual against the, 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 the feminine aspect of consciousness, and here's how it works. Uh, they, they, they have this owl that they're going to have a ritual before and they take an effigy of a child and they float it upon the water you see here the the dark aspect of the hermetic principle being conveyed here the as above so below aspect uh, in the reflecting pool as above so below and they float this effigy of uh, an infant out into the water where they set it ablaze and they immolate it to this owl. What this represents is the immolation of the inner child. That's what the elite are actually doing in this ceremony. They're telling people subconsciously to annihilate your emotion, annihilate your care for what you are doing in the world. So the ritual itself, the name of the ritual carries its meaning. The ritual is called the cremation of care. That is exactly what those who are participating in this are doing. They are immolating the inner sacred feminine child of consciousness. Care is what's being burned. So they're saying that dull care is the enemy. Your care for what you do to others is the enemy. It needs to be eradicated. So you can use your power of will to do anything that you want to do regardless of the consequences that it means for other people. If you immolate your emotion, you will be more able to do that effectively without emotions getting in the way. And that's why they burn the effigy of that infant. Anybody that says that that is not what the ritual is about does not understand the deep symbolic connotations of that ritual and the derivation of where that ritual came from. And it, it does indeed come from ancient Babylon, Babylonian rites, specifically the rites of the Ammonites, which were a dark, uh, basically a satanic cult, the worshippers of the gods of chaos. Molech being one of them, the devourer of the sacred child, the feminine care principle. But that is the owl. We see it encoded very covertly because the owl is a, a predatory bird that can see its prey at night from a higher perspective when its prey cannot see it. So it is easy to remain hidden and then attack when it wishes to to pounce upon its prey, and, and its prey is in the dark. So it's in the know, its prey is in the dark. A perfect symbol for a sorcerer wishing to yield occult knowledge against those who are in ignorance. We see it very covertly displayed on the shield, on the uh, upper right hand side, on the front of the one dollar bill up in the corner. Clearly though, when blown up, you can see that it is indeed a small owl peeking out from the corner. It is encoded in architecture. This is Commerce Square. Commerce Square. The financial system and the square, the symbol of base consciousness combined. And the two owls, the double owl, 
Uh, if you look at these uh, in another uh, different aspect, you'll see that there are actually wings down at their sides as well. This is on 21st and Market Street in Philadelphia. And um, this is the Frost Bank building in Austin, Texas. Clearly, from the corner angle and out, it looks even more convincingly uh, uh, as an owl when it is illuminated at night. And it is even more appropriate, and that brings us to the torch of illumination. The illuminated torch. This can be uh, simultaneously a symbol of freedom, a symbol of knowledge and awareness, of enlightenment, and it could also be used as a flame of sacrifice, a flame of uh, uh, those in the know using their knowledge to subvert others and to create sacrifice or immolation in the world. I don't tend to see this symbol as such. I tend to look at this symbol as the flame of knowledge, the flame of the torch of freedom, the torch of liberty, and uh, that's how I tend to look at it. But um, it goes back to uh, the Babylonian queen, the Babylonian uh, version of Isis in the Trinity. So you had, uh, just as you have God the Father, God the Son, and the Blessed Mother, okay, in the Christian Trinity, the Holy Spirit uh, taking the place of the, the, the feminine, of course, in that Trinity, but you have the, the Egyptian Trinity of Osiris, the Father God, Isis, the Mother, and Horus, the Divine Child. In Babylon, you had this same Trinity. You had Nimrod, the Father, Creator God. You had uh, the, the, the Son, which was Tammuz, depicted here, and he, he's sitting on the lap of the, uh, the sacred feminine goddess, which was known as Semiramis in this culture. So this is a depiction of her on an ancient coin, holding the cross of uh, uh, the, the cross of the sun and uh, a version of the chalice, which could also be seen as a torch. So you have Semiramis depicted here, the rays of the sun reflected from the moon. She is the moon goddess illuminated, the queen of heaven. She's holding the torch, torch of awareness, of liberty, of, of freedom, of um, of enlightenment. You see it on the back of old American dimes. You see it in Columbia Pictures logo. You see it on Amico's uh, gas company logo. So in, uh, in direct relation to the Queen of Heaven is the symbol of the dove. So the dove is uh, how the moon goddess is depicted as being a crescent, a white crescent moon. The white crescent moon, as it makes its trek across the sky, looks like a dove, a, a white bird. Uh, so, you know, you could take, imagine this piece as the wings as the, the crescent moon, and it's making its trek across the sky at night. So this is why the dove was associated, the, 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 um, the, the bird, the dove, is associated with the lunar feminine goddess, just like the falcon was associated at, with the uh, the, the male solar uh, god, Horus. And um, the word dove in the French language is Colum, C-O-L-U-M-B-E, Colum. This is why we have so many usages of the word, um, uh, of, of the word Columbia in, or Columbus in American symbology. The founder of the country is named after the dove. His name was actually Cristobal Colon, and he was a member of a secret society network. Here you see him giving a secret society hand gesture in this painting. But he was renamed Columbus after the goddess Columbia. See, it's the feminine god, goddess, named after the dove, Colum. We have the district of Columbia. The, the name of the capital where the male dominator phallic energy, the seat of male dominator power, is rooted in the United States. And look at where it's at. It's named after the sacred feminine, the dove, Columbia, and it is situated between two states. It is situated between Maryland and Virginia. 
Mary land, named after the goddess of the Christian Trinity, Mary, and the Virgin, Virginia. So right in between the two feminine states named after the goddess, you have the male phallic symbol of power also taking the name of the goddess. This is a symbolic rape, if you ask me. This is placing the phallic symbol directly in a slot between the two sacred feminine states. The male dominator energy of, of concentrated um, uh, centralized power of this country erected right between the two feminine states of Maryland and Virginia. Here we see the goddess depicted on Columbia Pictures. You have Columbia Records, Columbia Broadcasting, Columbia University with decidedly Masonic symbology on the on the, the shield of Columbia University with the three crowns representing the three blue lodge degrees with the square of base consciousness depicted there as well. But we have to understand again that the goddess represents the intuitive side of our consciousness. It represents conscious, conscience. The, the, the ability to know right from wrong, and that is a protector energy. It is also the aspect that gives birth to the male principle, the savior of the world, the enlightened neocortex. Here we see Mary, the sacred feminine, the limbic brain, the queen of heaven. She's giving birth to the immaculate heart of Jesus, the savior of the world. She is standing on top of the serpent here, the reptile. She's conquering the R complex, the limbic brain where emotion is born, where care is born in us. Okay? When we, when we listen to our intuition and listen to our inborn knowledge of right and wrong, we conquer the reptile aspect of ourself and we give birth to the son of the Godhead. And here you see the dove above her head. And here you see the 12 stars depicting the 12 houses of the zodiac. In this image is even more clear how she is a feminine protector. The queen of heaven illuminated by the rays of the sun is wearing the dark cloak of the heavens. The, the, the dark cloak with the stars embedded in it because she is the queen of heaven. You have the crescent moon because she's the moon goddess. She's being crowned by the angels as the queen of heaven. And she is acting as the protector of innocence, the inner child, conscience, care. And again, she's giving birth to the male savior figure, the neocortex, the divine child, the son, Jesus, and she is holding the serpent at bay, this, in that case, the sea serpent or the reptile. Hold the, the, the limbic brain holds the reptile complex at bay when we make a deep connection with it and we get into our intuitive side and we care. That's where conscience is born from. And that's why this goddess is seen as a protector. She's seen as the watcher of the torch of freedom and liberty because we have to get in touch with that sacred feminine side of ourselves in order to truly bear conscience and freedom into the world. Here we see in the modern Christian trinity, the goddess has been removed and replaced with the dove. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit represented as the dove, but there is no divine mother. The feminine has been removed and it's been replaced just by the symbol that the sacred feminine goddess was given in the ancient world, the dove, Kalun. Uh, now we're going to see a darker aspect of how the goddess uh, symbology is used. When we look at things, I'll, I'll, I'll do this one since it's lighter first. You have here the, the moon and the dove because this is a sacrifice of how we use money through credit, building up debt. So you have the moon and the dove on the same card for Visa. And it's a symbol of the sacred feminine being used in a, mo in a, in a depiction of sacrifice of an individual, sacrificing in a monetary sense. Here we see it being used in a very dark form 
as human sacrifice because human sacrifice is still very real, very actively practiced in the world. It just isn't the practice of carrying people up a pyramid as, it, as how it was done in the past or sacrificing them upon an altar with an obsidian blade or a dagger of some sort. Now, human sacrifice is carried out with the knowledge of everyone around us and it is done willingly people go off to sacrifice others and themselves in the act of war. War is modern day human sacrifice. And here you see the goddess with her wings depicted on a war memorial. And see, this is the goddess herself being sacrificed. A lot of researchers believe that it is them sacrificing people to the goddess. It isn't so much that they're sacrificing to the goddess. It's the reason the goddess is always depicted in conjunction with sacrifice is because they are sacrificing the goddess within an individual. It is the cremation of care, conscience, the protector, the, the grand architect of everything we experience is care. So this is the goddess herself depicted as being with these men as they are sacrificed along with the goddess. That's what war is. It's a, it's a ritual sacrifice of the sacred feminine in an act of sacrifice, of human sacrifice. So another use of the sacred feminine symbology and imagery when it comes to human sacrifice rituals or attempted human sacrifice rituals, we see this through uh, different uh, events that have played out that have the, the sacred feminine or the name of the sacred feminine embedded or encoded within the, the ritual or the, the scenario. You have uh, the, the murder of Princess Diana, which I do not believe was an accident. I believe she was uh, taken out because of her connections with the royalty of uh, Britain, and her name was Diana, uh, uh, a, a Roman name for the goddess Diana. Uh, we saw the Superdome incident where thousands and thousands of people were hoarded into this dome looking like a feminine breast and left there without supplies, essentially to die. Um, and FEMA did not get to this region for days after Katrina hit. And um, this, the conditions in there were horrendous. And I believe that that is a deliberately designed thing that was done to try to maximize the amount of, of death and suffering that happened in that feminine breast, the, the Superdome, a symbolic uh, representation of a breast. And the two large uh, school shooting incidences uh, could be seen as very clear examples of mind control, of, of trauma-based mind control, were at Columbine High School. Again, Columbia, Kalum, the Dove, Columbine. And Virginia Tech, the Virgin, Virginia. Again, two names of the goddess. Again, human sacrifice rituals in disguise made to look like totally uh, disconnected incidents. But perhaps the clearest example of human sacrifice in concealed ritual of all is the symbolic burning or immolation of the Columbia Space Shuttle. Again, the Columbia, named after the goddess Columbia, Kalum, the dove. And it's the white dove. And it's burning up, being immolated as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. And we see the crew was a seven-member crew. And they're car that's correlating to the seven planetary bodies of astrotheology. You have the five male gods, five men in the crew. You have the Sun, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And the two feminine 
uh, heavenly bodies, you have Venus and the Moon. So the, the seven principles of astrotheology are encoded there in the crew of the Columbia, another ritual of human sacrifice. The next symbol that I'm going to discuss is the, the, the fasci. And this is where the word fascism comes from. It is the axe surrounded by the bundle of rods. This is a Roman symbol that represents centralized authority. It is the, uh, the central authority is the axe and then the satellite regions, the satellite states are the bundles, uh, the rods bundled by the central Roman authority, the fasci. This is where the word fascism comes from. We see this in uh, 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 multiple areas when it comes to political symbology. It is on the two sides of the Senate chamber, uh, the House chamber. It is on uh, the, the fasci is depicted on the, uh, th the throne that Abraham Lincoln sits upon as a dominator father figure God type, God figure. So he's holding both uh, 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 compartments of power, the church in one hand and the state in the other, because an absolute ruler must unify those two principles. It must unify political and spiritual power into one. And uh, the, uh, the regime that really attempted to do that in the modern world was the Third Reich. And here you see the Roman fasci symbol as uh, the symbol of the Third Reich used on one of their post postage stamps. We had it previously on the back of old American dimes.